Hello, Guitar Geeks. My name is Andy, and this is my guide on how to get the most from your ID Core V3 amp from Blackstar. In this video, I'm going to show you three things how to record directly to the computer using the USB connection, how to use the amp as a monitor speaker, and how to reamp your guitar signal, which is a little complicated, so it kind of needs a video explanation. Step one is to plug the amp into the computer using a USB A to USB mini cable. And the amp doesn't come with one, so if you need one, there's a link in the video description to where you can buy one. It's extremely important you plug the amp directly into the computer, not into a USB hub. The next step is to select the amp as the audio interface. And this is very dependent on whether you're running Mac or PC, and then which recording software you're using. So my DAW of choice is Logic on a Mac. You might be using Cubase on Windows. So this video is going to be very Logic-centric, but the core information is the same. If you don't know how to select an audio interface in your personal DAW, then you're going to have to go and search YouTube for how to do that and then come back to me. But the core information is the same, so stay with me for a bit. So I've started a new project on Logic. I'm going to go to the top to Logic Pro X, go to Preferences and Audio. Then in the output device and input device, I'm simply going to find the ID core amplifier and select that. So it's chosen both for me, output device and input device. Click Apply. And now we're rocking and rolling with the ID core. That is now the way we're going to get audio in and out of the computer. Close that down, and I'm going to start a new audio. It's really important because the amp is in stereo to select input one and two. There we go, and create. I'm going to rename that guitar track stereo, and we're ready to record. Then open up the Architect software, which gives you control over all the amp settings, including cab rig lights, so you can change the cab and change the voice and all the pedals, etc. But most importantly, you've got this level fader here, which controls how much signal goes into the recording software. Because if you've got it all the way up here, you're going to boost it too much and you're going to overload that channel. So I normally keep mine around this area, but it's dependent on what you're doing with the amp. So please, if you're overloading your DAW at any point, that's the fader you need to change check out. Okay, so now we're back in Logic, and uh, I'm going to try and play something and see what it sounds like. I'm checking out this fader just here to make sure that I'm not overloading. As you can see, the level is quite low, so go back to Architect and boost that level fader. I'm going to bring that level up to about two thirds and check back in Logic. So that tells us that uh, I'm, I've got a healthy signal. I could have a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it there for right now. And then all I have to do is press record. But before I do that, I'm going to add a second track. And that will become apparent why I'm doing that when we go to the reamping section. So the way I'm going to do that is add another track, but this time three and four, checking that the device is the ID core amplifier. And then we're going to go to create. So now I've got two tracks. We're going to rename that uh, guitar track. DI. Importantly, I'm going to record enable both tracks, but I don't need to monitor anything. This is the, the monitoring. I don't need to do that because it's already coming through the amp. When we went to our preferences at the beginning of this video, we also selected the ID Core V3 as the output device. And this means now that when I press record, the click track metronome, which keeps me in time, is going to come through the speaker of the amp, which is, of course, very, very cool. Um, right, so both tracks are record enabled. I will go back to the beginning of the track, press record, and off we go. One, two, three, yeah. There we go, right, okay, now I'm going to mute Guitar Track DI, go back to the beginning and just listen to Guitar Track Stereo. <laughs> That'll do. And then we we'll go back again, and this time mute guitar track stereo and listen to the DI signal, which is the same guitar part but with no effects on it. That's useful because you've got just a clean guitar going in 
to the DAW. Now, we could now send that signal using something like Amplitube. So I could um, go down to my audio units and say I want to put it through Amplitude 5, for example. Now that we've got Amplitude loaded up on that track, I could play it and it will play whatever's on this amp. So um, it's just played Amplitude. I'm going to turn that off, but leave it there for a second. So that's one way to use the amp as an audio interface when you don't actually have to use the settings from the amp. The other way is to reamp it using the amp. Before I show you how to reamp using the ID Core V3, let's define what reamping is. It's pretty simple. It's amping again. So we're going to take that clean DI signal, route it back through the amp. We can change the effects. We can keep the same effects if we want, or we can change the voice to a, a super crunch, or we can add some tremolo or whatever, and then re-record that without having to play it again. That's it. And you can do that as many times as you want, as long as you have that clean DI signal. So let's do it. The first thing you need to do is go to the cog wheel just up here that goes to the settings panel, then put the amp into reamping mode, which is quite hard to find. It's snuck away just under here. There we go. Now the amp is in reamping mode. When we finished, don't forget to turn that off. I will remind you at the end of this little section of the video. Then go back to your DAW and we're going to add a new stereo track. So the way I do it in Logic is to do that. And we want to input one and two again. Output one and two, there we go. Tracks one, we have a new track. I'm gonna call this Guitar Reamped. There we go. Now we just need to tell Logic and the amp to communicate with each other to play back this DI track and record it on this new track. I'm not gonna tell you why it's like this. I'm just gonna show you how to do it in the interest of simplicity. So what we do in Logic and in any DAW, you have to tell this reamped channel what to listen to. So I'm going to say it's listening to one and two. We've already selected that. However, go back to the DI track and tell it to send it somewhere else. Currently, it's sending out of stereo out, which is actually output one and two of the ID core. So on your DAW, it may say output one and two. We're going to change that to three and four. So now when I press record, this track here is going to listen to what's playing on this track here. Here we go. There. So now this track is essentially the same as the first track because it's using the same effects. We haven't changed anything on the amp. If you want to hear what you reamped, you need to turn reamping mode off first so it can play it back to the speaker. So that's that's just how it is. But let's say we don't like that. Let's say we're going to delete it. I'm going to try it again, but this time we'll change the settings on the amp because that's why we're reamping it to have a slightly different sound. Go back to Architect, and this time you can change anything you want. So let's put some tremolo on there, and we can just sort of demo that by playing through the amp. Let's say we want to change the reverb to um, a hall. And put some delay on there as well. Okay, there we go. Um, now we have a slightly different sound. Let's also put it on the, the different amp as well, just to really change that sound. Alrighty, so hands off the guitar. I don't need to play it again. I just now need to go to turn the reamping mode back on. In fact, let's let's put it through a different cab before we do that. Whoops. Let's change let's roll the dice. Okay, now we've really changed that setting and it's a completely different patch. Um, reamping mode is on. Back to logic. Now all this is already set up, it's already as it was. Um, we've got to unmute that, I'm sorry. Then we're ready to go. So this track is active to play, this track is active to record. Press record, and it will reamp through the amp with our new settings. Very cool. So now it, it's not that different. Um, I could have put it on the OD2 channel, for example. But uh, turn reamping off, like so. 
Boom. Back to Logic. So that's our new track with the new settings. Let's compare that to the original track with the original settings. And then to hear the DI track, we need to make sure that this output is set back to stereo output. Otherwise, it's not going to know where to send the audio to the speaker. Notice that one's in mono because it's not affected by the amp. Um, and that's pretty much it for reamping. So if you found that confusing, please go and watch this part of the video again. But basically, all you have to do is make sure that you turn reamping mode on. And then right at the end, when you finished reamping, remember to turn it off. Otherwise, things are going to go do lally, and you're going to end up leaving me loads of comments saying I've broken your amp for you. Please don't break your amp. Before I love you and leave you, I'm just going to show you that this is the monitor speaker. And if I were to add some drums or another track, that would also play back through the amp. So if you're just using a laptop, you don't need external monitors. You can use the amp as your speaker. So um, in Logic, they have a, a drummer. So let's add the drummer. And I'm going to select Songwriter. There we go. And um, it's going to give me something already. And if I press play now with the new track, there we go, mute the DI. So that, now we're going to hear um, Bluebird drums, whatever they've set to the to the BPM, and the guitar reamped. And it sounds, let's start it there. So I drag it back to there. And now everything's going to come through this speaker for me. So this time, I'm going to leave this microphone on so you can hear what I'm hearing. There we go. So everything's coming through that as a monitor speaker. Very, very cool. That's it. That's how you record, how you reamp, and how you monitor through the ID Core V3. I hope the guide was simple enough, yet in depth enough that you don't need to ask any more questions. But if you do, there's a comment section down below. You can leave questions and things like that. And I'll be there to help you out. But maybe we can help each other because. I know someone's going to ask me about a different DAW, and I don't use a different DAW to Logic. That's all I use. But if you do want to post your question, hopefully someone else will help you with Windows and Cubase and all, all the rest of those sorts of things. Don't be afraid to, to get in touch is what I'm trying to say. As you're down in that general area, you could leave a thumbs up on the video. And if, if you really want to come back, click the subscribe and the bell button thing, because that means you'll get notified of all the future videos I make, including more videos on the ID Core V3. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that's helped you out. I hope you've had fun. And I hope that you go and make music, be it with this amp or with something else. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.